I'm Jean-Nicolas Maillard from Step2 in Johnson in Brussels. We have the pleasure of welcoming today at the IBC Antitrust Conference in Brussels, David Yeros, who is the Chief of Staff and Head of International and European Affairs at the French Competition Authority. Uh, David and I have just been uh, this afternoon on a panel, um, Enforcers panel, um, gathering five competition authorities in Europe, where we had very interesting debates, and maybe we can start with that, David. Um, David, well actually, uh, could you maybe introduce yourself in a few words and tell us about your background and career to, to date? Okay, uh, so my name is David Viros. I'm a Chief of Staff to the President of the Autorité de la Concurrence, and in that capacity, I am in charge of international and European affairs, and I also deal with institutional matters uh, at a domestic level. And I was, uh, prior to joining the Autorité, I was in private practice for a couple of years. So, David, we started this panel this afternoon uh, discussing cooperation between national competition authorities, and I know as a matter of fact that the French Competition Authority has collaborated on a very regular basis on cases and outside of cases in other national competition authorities in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, a very rich debate around this issue, and in particular, I would like you to tell us a little bit more about your cooperation with the German Federal Cartel Office. Okay, well we decided uh, last year to engage in a joint study with our German counterparts on the issue of data and competition. And the idea is to look at this sort of novel issue which has also attracted uh, a lot of interest from, uh, for instance, the CMA or the German Monopole Commission. Um, and our aim is to provide a sort of general guiding principles and a, maybe a first look at uh, an issue which has not necessarily been addressed in the context of competition enforcement, uh, but which nonetheless is of interest to uh, stakeholders throughout Europe. Uh, so this is what we're trying to achieve, and we're sort of building on the precedent of our cooperation with the CMA on closed and open systems. Right, so thank you for these explanations about what you are currently doing with the um, Federal Cartel Office in Germany. You announced last week um, a new form of cooperation as well, bilateral cooperation with the Spanish Competition Authority. Could you tell us a little bit about this initiative? Yeah, well the idea, the general idea is for us to foster ties with, uh, with neighboring uh, agencies. Um, and this we have done with, uh, for instance, the Bundeskartellamt by having a convening uh, every two years a meeting with our uh, senior staff and presidents uh, to discuss current issues and also uh, organize a conference. And the idea with our Spanish colleagues is also to uh, meet at regular intervals and, uh, and uh, have sort of frank and, and regular uh, exchanges on, on enforcement, on general policy issues. And uh, the first meeting we had uh, last week proved uh, uh, highly useful, very fruitful, and uh, we are really hopeful that we, to, that we can pursue this effort uh, uh, in the years to come. So, so David, um, switching maybe to a different topic, 2015 has been a very eventful year for the French Competition Authority, um, which have seen a number of changes in these procedural tools. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the changes? So uh, yes, actually we've, uh, 2015 has witnessed a number of changes to our uh, key um, enforcement tools, uh, namely leniency and settlement. Um, regarding leniency, we revised our notice on leniency uh, last April and we introduced a number of changes uh, which should uh, increase uh, the incentives for firms to come and apply for leniency before the French authority. Um, and these uh, changes in part reflect the changes which were brought to the model leniency program in 2012, which is elabor elaborated in the context of the ECN. And also as a reflection of a 10-year survey we conducted uh, on the concrete operation of our program and uh, in order to obtain some feedback from stakeholders. And basic improvements uh, concern summary applications, uh, the fact that we're going to issue press release whenever we conduct dawn raids in order to ensure a sort of a level playing field and allow firms which were not inspected to also apply for leniency. And we also, for the sake of legal certainty, introduced brackets uh, uh, to which firms can refer and, and uh, on the basis of which they can anticipate uh, the discount they may obtain 
uh, through uh, leniency application. So th this is a really welcome uh, improvement and we're looking forward to actually increase the success of our program, which is already not doing too bad because we've had uh, 11 decisions uh, so far for a total of uh, around 3 billion euros in fines uh, following leniency applications. And then the second uh, uh, change concerns settlements and that was introduced by the Loi Macron, so it's a change in statutes and it allows us basically to settle a case um, more or less um, along the lines of the commission settlement procedure. Uh, there are of course national specificities, uh, settlement would occur after the SO uh, and parties are in any event granted full access to the file but this should allow us to uh, reach an agreement on the uh, amount of the fine, something we could not do under the current settlement procedure. And we hope that with the system, we will in particular reduce uh, the litigation uh, before the, the Court of Appeal on the decisions we adopt. And that should lead to considerable uh, uh, administrative uh, efficiency and, and savings. So this is something we really appreciate. Besides this change in procedural tools, there was also um, a considerable expansion of the scope of action of the French Competition Authority, which inherited new powers, new territories um, to regulate. Could you tell us a little bit about that as well? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, again, the Loi Macron I mentioned uh, previously has uh, entrusted us with new missions uh, concerning uh, regulated legal professions, uh, just to name a few, notaries, bailiffs, Etc. Those professions uh, currently operate with uh, regulated tariffs and strict uh, uh, conditions as regards access to the, the market and rules on establishment. Um, <clears throat> and the, um, the government uh, and has decided to entrust us with uh, powers which are purely advisory but uh, will imply in practice uh, a um, detailed monitoring of the market and, a, a, and an implication in the drafting of uh, regulations pertaining to these uh, professions. And uh, this will have an impact on our activity and therefore uh, we have been given also uh, increased uh, uh, resources and staff uh, and that is uh, very welcome. So we should have uh, by the end of the year 192 uh, uh, permanent employees within the authority to cope with these new missions as well as with uh, our uh, core missions. So more to see on that space.